Hello and good morning. It's about 7.30 a.m. right now. And I just woke up. I've been awake for about maybe an hour and a half. And today I uh, wanted to get up early. And I wanted to set a schedule for um, now on to get up at 6 a.m. every day. So that I have more time to make videos and to do drawings. So today, what I want to talk about is drawing with a um, ultra fine point sharpie marker. Um, it, it works like a pen, but it draws like a marker. So it's kind of a combination of both. And so I want to talk about some tips that I have for using these. And um, I, a lot of the drawings I do that I have been doing has been with this pen here, or this marker rather. I keep getting the mix getting them the mix up because it's a uh, very similar to a um no a pen but anyways um i have different colors of this but i usually use the black sharpie ultra fine points because i just prefer drawing in black and white um, always have and so i want to talk about some of the tips that i have some techniques that i use for drawing with these and some some of the ways that it's helped me so one way that i have uh like using these is whenever I'm drawing I'll hold the marker at an angle and what this does is it allows me to have uh, a finer lines than what I would normally get if I was just drawing with a uh, no more of a vertical angle if I hold it like this I can get finer lines and that's because less of the tip is coming in contact with the paper so here's an example of that if I'm holding the marker more vertical like you would hold um, other pens or isographs you're going to get a more a thicker line than, than uh, what you get holding at an angle such as that now if I hold the marker at an angle like this I get a slightly thinner line now if I wanted to be even thinner if I go over the paper with quicker with my hand it's going to be even thinner than that and it takes some practice to be able to do this um, when I first started doing this many years ago I had a really hard time trying to get that thin line but you can just just practice doing it um, one great way to practice doing this is to practice doing some cross hatching so just go one direction and then go over the other direction. Now, depending on how you draw, if you're left handed or right handed, the line, when you um, draw the line, it might be bold, more bold in one location than the next. So, for me, I have where my lines are more bold on this side here. And so, um, it usually happens the first time that the pen comes into contact with the paper. Uh, and then after that, it tapers off. So remember that when you're drawing something, um, that the first time it comes in contact with the paper, it's going to be a bit thicker than when you let go because it's tapering off. And the reason is because the tip of the marker, um, or such as uh, other off-brand markers, whatever kind you're using, the tip of it is slightly soft. So as you press, it makes it um, a bit wider. And then as you let pressure off it becomes a lot thinner and um, that helps me a lot with when I'm cross hatching or from drawing uh, portraits faces or whatever it is that I'm shading um, I, I can get if I want a spot on the bottom here to be darker say let's say it's a uh, you know the side of a face so what I'll do is I'll start from that part where it's darkest here that's where I'll start my line and then the location where it's lighter here on this side that's where I'll taper off and it makes it easier to do my cross hatching or shading now you'll be surprised you actually can shade using just a ultra fine point sharpie um, and that's because if you keep doing repeating lines over and over you know these small um, 
lines that go over the paper really fast and you hold it at a pretty good angle, I'd say 45 degrees is about the limit. Uh, it's more like 60, I think, I'd say 60 degrees is probably the limit to the angle that you want to have when you're holding the pen. Any more than that, you're not going to get a line. So let's say I want to get a shading look to a drawing, but I want to do that with a marker. And this is how I would do it. I would just hold it at an angle and then keep moving the marker over the paper really quick like this. And with a lot of practice, you can get very light lines to where it's barely showing up on the paper. So you can draw with it like you would with a ballpoint pen almost. Um, actually very similar to what you would use a ballpoint, how you would use a ballpoint pen. And these are pretty cheap. You can get a whole box of them online, a uh, case of 12 for about 5 to $7 and that's it. So they're cheap, um, convenient, and another thing I like about drawing with these is that unlike a ballpoint pen or a graphite pencil, you don't have to press. Um, I might press slightly when I'm doing my shading like this where I'm drawing at an angle, but that's only because less of the, the pen is coming into contact with the paper, so I press slightly to help widen the tip of it and then I'm able to um, get that line. For example, if I'm drawing and I put no pressure at all hardly, but I have it at an angle, I'm not really going to get a line at, you know, at all. It's going to be super, super thin. So to fix that problem, what I do is I just add a little bit of pressure. As you can see here, no pressure at all. There's almost no line at all. And then if I hold it the same way but add more pressure, I get more of a line. And you notice that more at the beginning of the line right here where there's a bit of a, it's kind of like a dot. And that's the same as what I explained before where when you're drawing the, the, with a marker, the first time it comes into contact with the paper is always going to be the location that it is darkest. And another tip I have for drawing with, um, with these is when you're drawing with these compared to say a ballpoint pen or um, a graphite and everything is that it, because it's a marker it's going to bleed onto the paper it's going to go on the paper a lot faster and if you're using really cheap paper you're going to get um, more bleeding, of, bleeding than what you would get with um, other pens now unless you're using like you know, a brush pen or um, uh, a bold uh, fountain pen, but then you're going to get a lot of bleeding. And the paper that I'm using to show this demonstration is is this cheap printer paper. You can buy a pack of like a thousand sheets of this paper for like you know ten dollars, under ten dollars probably. Like I've seen it in stores for like six bucks or five dollars. But um, anyways, uh, this is just cheap printer paper, and I like using this as an example because if you can draw on this, then you can draw on any paper. And I would advise that you use actual drawing paper, but I'm just using this as an example for anybody that doesn't have the money to afford um, no really expensive drawing papers. And um, But there are a lot of cheap alternatives out there. And I'll leave a link in the description of this video for um, some sketchbooks and some drawing papers that I recommend for those of you that... Um, want a cheap paper that also works well and a good paper for markers so um yes about the sharpie marker um i also like that the tip of this it's thin like you would get with a pen but it's also like a marker so when i'm drawing whenever i make contact with the paper that's the line i get I don't have to worry about too much line variation as much as I would get with, um, you know, a ballpoint pen, um, uh, a flexnib fountain pen. Well, that's the whole purpose of a flexnib fountain pen. Um, or any other pen. As soon as it comes in contact with paper, that's the line width that you get. And what I also like is the cheap price. Um, I like the many different colors that you can get with this that you can't get with a lot of other pens. You can get it with gel pens, but those, they smudge and everything. Um, 
a lot easier than what you can than what a marker would and um the gel the ink that's in the gel pens takes longer to dry and um, I, I just really love using these because you can you can draw on anything pretty much i can draw on um a backpack a pair of shoes you name it whatever it is you can almost draw on anything and they're versatile they're cheap and that's just what i like using using these for and i think they're also great for um, if you want to start drawing and you because most people have um, graphite pencils um, ballpoint pens and markers and the three main pencils would be you know just a standard school pencil which is the hb uh, number two um, graphite pencil uh, a sharpie marker and a ballpoint pen such as the the big ballpoint pens the three standard uh, drawing utensils almost everybody has. So if, if you've got any of those three, um, you should be able to draw. There shouldn't be an excuse that uh, you don't have a way to. But anyways, um, I like that th the small tip of this pen and how I can get finer lines and details that I can get with other markers. Um, you could use a, like a, a fine tipped brush pen but that requires a lot of practice so if you want to just start out and get better at drawing with markers um, I think this will suit you pretty good um, because of the cheap cost and all that and uh, yeah these these are some uh, a, a great marker for somebody that's starting out or even anybody that's um, professional um, although a lot of professionals might be using something like um, prisma color or something but um i think for a lot of people we have a long ways to go before we need to start worrying about really expensive markers and all that um just stay focused on improving your drawing first with markers and then after you've improved a lot then um if, if you're selling drawings and things then maybe you should kind of worry more so about um you know the quality of the marker and um my second tip I would give you about these is um, some markers aren't archival, so like the ink that's in it, it, it does it, it will fade and stuff like that. It's not going to be permanent like um, some some inks are or paint, and so that is one thing you have to be aware of, and that's why I like I prefer to um, do a lot of my sketching and practice with this. And most of my really detailed finished artwork, I'll use a, a fountain pen or some type of ink that doesn't fade or anything. And I'll also be using a archival paper that isn't going to fade as well. So, um, I'm trying to think if there's any other tips that I know of for these markers. Because I feel like I've covered most of it. But a lot of times I tend to forget, you know, like... 10 things or so after I make a video that I don't remember until later on. But, um, yeah, I've, I've done a couple of videos recently with, with this, uh, ultra fine point, uh, sharpie marker. And I've, you know, I've done some portraits with it. And I had shown one video about, um, you know, drawing faces and I've done a tutorial about that. But I will be doing tutorials now about how to just draw with each um type of marker or you know doing portraits with pens versus graphite or drawing portraits um and pen versus drawing it with marker or colored pencils and so on because they can all give it a different effect and a different look to it because of the way that you can hold the pencil the marker or the pen it's going to give you a different line variation and you can do some things with markers or pencils or pens that you can't you know, that you can't do with other things um for example with you know a brush marker sure you can fill in a lot of things really fast and draw really fast with it which takes a lot of practice to be able to to do that and it takes a lot of hand control but the downside is, is that you can't really get um, you know shading and stuff like you can get with a graphite pencil um, and the only way you can really do that is 
by watering down the ink or using a gray ink or something like that. And it just takes a lot more practice to get really good at that. And it's not really something that a lot of beginners would use. And um, that's why I think that just starting out with the Ultra Fine Point Sharpie Pen would work great because they're cheap. A lot of people have them. And um, yeah, they're just very versatile. And they've always worked great for me. I have never had any issues. Um, I think the only time I've ever really had any problems with drawing with markers when it was, you know, some really cheap um, pen from, you know, like a generic dollar store or some local store around me. And um, that's really the only time I've ever had you know, much of a problem with a marker. And that's because they were, you know, like a dollar for like a pack of 12. They're really, really cheap. But um, even then you can draw things. You know, it might not be archival ink and everything but uh you can still draw stuff so yeah i like these i like doing a lot of my doodles with them um doing portrait sketching you name it you can do it and i think they'll work great for you so if you have any questions or uh any suggestions about anything for this video go ahead and let me know in the comments down below and i'll be leaving a link in the video where you can find these markers they are the Sharpie Ultra Fine Point. And I'll also be leaving a link in the description of the video to where you can find um, some papers I recommend for markers and um, some sketchbooks as well, such as you know, loose sheets of paper versus sketchbooks. Um, that's up to you. But I'll leave a link in the description of the video so you can find that. But um, for now... I'm going to go work on some drawings and get my day planned out and just go from there. So if you have any questions, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And I will see you in the next video. And you have a good day.